today's project is about how to use a stock tank to make a self-watering planter. And the nice thing about a self-watering planter is you can water it, maybe depends how big it is and how hot it is and I mean, how hot the weather is, but oftentimes you can set it up so you'd only have to water every couple of weeks or every three weeks or something like that. And there are ways to check whether you're needing to water, to put more water in it. Um, this is a two foot by six foot by two foot galvanized stock tank that I got at my local feed store. Um, I got one with a drain. It's really, really important. If you drive around and see other people are making garden beds without drains, you have a potential for having your soil get um, sour and, and anaerobic and getting root die off. It's really nice to be able to drain yours out completely. Um, so another advantage is if you are um, you know, creaky elderly or in a wheelchair or have other reasons that getting down on the ground or reaching, bending over to the ground is hard, this will end up at a reasonably um, good level for, for working at. And in the case of this particular one, it's being built in a place where um, there is a lot of pressure from um, feral cats who any time a garden bed is opened up for planting um, will go and leave little treasures there. And so um, after we have it all filled up with soil and ready to plant, we're going to come up with a way to keep um, friendly felines from going in and excavating, um, which is harder to do at ground level. As soon as you get it home, make sure it doesn't leak, and if it does, take it back. Um, I'm going to make sure you get one with a bung. You want to make sure you have a tool to be able to take out the bung. So this is a tool that goes in the bung. So, and then you take the bung out. Now the bung has regular hose threads, so you're going to get yourself, you're going to go to your local plumbing supply place or your hardware store and you're going to get yourself something that has regular, regular plumbing threads on one side, regular water pipe threads, and hose type threads on the other, which are, they're different spacing. So you're going to put this in here. Now, if I wanted to put a piece of Teflon tape on it, I could be more sure that I wouldn't have a, a leak issue. Now, they swore that this would fit. Well, we could try and see if it's actually the other way around. It is the other way around. Okay, that's the one that goes in. And this is the hose one, where they only give you three turns, which isn't much when you want your hose to stick to it. Okay, where's that piece of hose? The best farms, you know, have a boneyard being a place where you keep old stuff that you can reuse. So this farm has a pile of old hoses. Um, I'm hoping that this doesn't have any leak in this part of it, but I haven't actually tested it. So I'm putting a piece of hose on here so that partly so I can drain it at a distance. But the main reason is that this hose is going to act as a way to tell you how much water is in here because this bed is going to have it's going to be a third gravel and then a layer of cocoa peat and then a layer of um, homemade potting soil on top of it so you don't want the water getting up into the soil part because then you have a problem with drowning the roots of your plants so you want the water to come no higher than the gravel and you want to be able to know how much water is in there. Now you're going to have a fill pipe that you can look at, which is another way to test. But if you have a great thicket of lettuce or vines or something over your fill pipe and you, or it's dark or whatever, this is another way to be able to tell. So we're not going to do it right this minute, but what you can do is um, I'm going to cut this pipe to somewhere around here that's taller than the, than the tub. And after we're all done with all the rest of it, I'm going to put a stake in here and I'm going to tie it up to the stake. Now when this is filled up with water, which the fullest we're going to want it is about a third full where the gravel is, that water level will be reflected in the pipe when the pipe is put on the in the hose when the hold is pulled up. So if the water is to here, it will be to here on here. So you can let it down and if water starts flowing out at this point, you know you you still got water, you still got water, you still got water, you still got water. 
And if no water comes out until it's down there, then you are actually all drained out. So it's a backup way to tell how much water you have. Now, if I didn't want to cut my hose, I would just put, this is a shut off. Shut off, open, shut. If I didn't want to cut the hose and I wanted to be able to drain this somewhere way away from where it's set up, um, or if I wanted to be able to use it to water my rose bushes or something like that, which I have some of there, I would put it on and keep it shut when I came to the point of adding water. If I want to use this, if I want to just use a short piece of this, but want to be able to shut it off and, or not have things crawl down it, then I can buy um, I can buy a little piece that goes on the end here, um, a male fitting that clamps on. You can buy those at the hardware store in the hose section. And then I would be able to put the shutoff on it. Um, or today we're going to take the hose back off. And just because we want to be able to add the water today, we're going to go ahead and put the shutoff right here. So just so you know, before you add the water, you want the shutoff because the whole point is to have a reservoir and you're not going to have a reservoir if you don't have a shutoff. The next, the next step is we're going to put the gravel in. Um, it's, it's river rock, Monster river rock here. Um, but we want the water to be able to come up. We want to encourage the water to come up into the soil. So these are, these are going to be, these were made from, um, Candy wipe type containers, and this is what one looks like beforehand. So you rip off the top and you cut off the bottom using some combination of a scissors and handy knife, and being careful not to perforate your fingers. And then you can look into here. These wicks are going to, these are going to have cocoa peat, wet cocoa peat in them, and they're going to act as wicks, so they help bring the water up from the bottom into the layer with the soil on it. So that's what these are for. Yep. yep. So the way this the way this setup works is there's a, a water reservoir that's down in the rock layer, and then there are these wicks that are tubes that are going to help carry the water up into the soil layer, and we're going to fill them with cocoa peat, which is ground cocoa coir, which is the stuff that's outside the coconut shell. Um, it's a pretty good substitute for peat, except for true peat. True peat is definitely um, not a positive thing to buy, considering that they're ripping up, you know, Canadian peatlands and other peatlands around the world to sell peat for gardeners. It is a good thing, nice thing to grow blueberries in, and, co and cocoa coir is not this acidic, so it's not the same that function. But for for something absorbent to use in a soil mix or in this wicking function, cocoa coir is good. So we're going to pack these with pre prehydrated cocoa coir.
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of um, three inch PVC plastic pipe. Um, this is a two foot tall bed, so we're going to cut it to just about two, two feet. This is just a tiny bit under two feet with a rolled edge. We're going to cut it to just above the, and we're going to put it straight down, and then we're going to fill this whole thing in with rock up to the top of the peat. So the next thing is to, one person's going to start putting rock in around here, and the other person's going to measure and cut the pipe. So this is just marking the cut so that when we use the, the saw, it won't go to each side. It can go right into the, the small mark. This is a good technique if you're going to be trying to saw something slippery. Is a little under two feet okay? Yeah. I very, think that should be fine. Very it, little? Yep, that should be fine for what we're doing. So I just, just go at it? We trust you. a little bit. Good job. <laughs> This is going to be, this is a standpipe for filling it. Um, it doesn't have to be in any particular relationship to the wicks. It can be anywhere that you find to be convenient. I'm going to put it right here. Um, you, would you hold that while I put some rock in around it to hold that? So the reason, if the recording is on, the reason we have a, a pipe to put the water in is so that you don't have to worry about washing out your seeds or disturbing it and also you're going to be putting the water in here and the other way you can tell how much water is in here by looking down this pipe and you can see um, how high the water is in there to have a sense of how much water is in your in your bed so we realized that since we didn't put um, little ports in the bottom the way we did with the wicks that we um, need to raise it up on the gravel a little bit so the water can get out at the bottom of the pipe. So, um, um, other times when I've made these, not, not, I don't only done it this way, but um, one time, one or two times when we did it, we put an elbow on the bottom and then we had a pipe um, that ran down the length of the bed and the little pipe, pipe along the bottom of the bed was um, that kind of pipe that has round holes in it, white pipe with round holes in it. It's used as a kind of drain tile thing. Um, but you don't, we realize we don't really need to do that because with the rock here, the water is going to spread out. We don't really need to do that to spread it out. So, but it is a good idea to raise the pipe up a little bit so that the water can get out the bottom.
um, fiberglass screen and this is actually an experiment I don't know if this is going to work well um, what you want is a layer between the river rock where the water reservoir is and the next layer which is going to be pure cocoa coir and then after that the soil you want a layer that keeps the soil from filtering down among the rock because you don't want the, the soil to get waterlogged so you just want the, the water is going to sit among the rock and be a reservoir and you want to, you don't want the soil to filter down you want the soil to stay above and not fill up the spaces in the rock so in the past we've used as a substitute for landscape fabric we happen to have some um, we had a whole bunch of windbreak fabric that's used for protecting plants or animals from strong winds like from protecting plants from drying out and I think we had it um, when we had the plant nursery um, so that's what we've used in the past um, I looked at landscape fabric and I didn't like I didn't feel as if it would be as permeable as I want it to be for water so I'm trying this and we may find out that too much soil goes through it so it's an experiment and um, I guess I can report in a few months how it went um, like when we let the water out we can see if there's a lot of dirt in it a lot of soil in it so what we're going to do is cut this wire on um, this screen so that it will fit down over um, the rock <laughs> I'm cutting the teeth Shorter scissors would be easier. Or maybe to mark it with a to mark it with a colored marker, take it out and then do it on the ground. I can't get to all of these angles, so somebody who's on the other side is gonna to need to maybe I can. Okay. So I think when we put it back again. We'll just tuck them under like that. That look good? Pretty mm -hmm. good? Something like that? Looks good. You're doing a very neat job. <laughs> it's tape. It's tapering. There we go. Okay. Leave it off okay. tonight so those little critters can get out. So. About um, a, a way that you can manage the outflow um, from the stock tank for your self-watering bed and one way is to use a hose like this and you can have put a stake in and clip the hose to the stake and then you'll put your shut off at the end of the hose now when you cut a hose don't use scissors like this this is a this is an example of cutters but you don't want to use scissors you want to use utility shears or a utility knife but you can cut off the hose wherever you want and then you can get one of these which is a a male fitting and it comes apart in two halves with screws that go through and you slide that onto the end of the hose and tighten the um, tighten the screws 
and um, then you have a new fitting on the end of a piece of hose and you can you, you can then put your shut off on the end of that so you can have your shut off up here at height and then the, and then you can use the hose to calculate how, how deep the water is if, there, if at any time you can't see into the standpipe so just wanted to add that because that's how you can retrofit a hose to whatever length you want is to put this kind of a fitting on the end of it so here we are another day carrying on um, astute observers will notice that this is at a slant and that's my fault because I thought that it would be simpler to level up my new compost pile and put it on that than to dig out the side of my hill to make it flat. Don't do this um, because it settled unevenly and now I'm it's um, both too heavy to move and I've thought about driving wedges and under the lower corner there um, but as the founder of this technique pointed out to me, they have these glue welds, these synthetic welds on the inside. And if we start torquing the metal at all by, by trying to get it up to, the, to perfectly level, that may be an issue. So it probably won't make a lot of difference to the functioning, but we will find out whether the things on this side and in that corner um, do better than the things on this side. Um, so these are the wicks you see there. The moisture has come up to the top of the wick. We're going to put the screen over the top of that and then we're going to put a layer of straight cocoa peat on top of that so that there will be cocoa peat and then the screen and then these wicks and that way the water um, the moisture can wick up through into the next layer of cocoa peat so go ahead and do you know which way is which there should be a, a different hole at this end other way around and it should be also off to the side not straight in the middle so, yeah okay we're finding out now whether our cuts are in the right place or whether we have to do some supplemental cuts now you can fold the um, All the little cut pieces and if you people want to cut out circles and throw away ends they're certainly welcome to do it that way i'm getting the scissors cut this was supposed to get cut off before we dropped it down in but it would have been a little hard to tell exactly where to do it so to people um, photographer is that here's a standpipe and you can see the water down it so you can see approximately how, how the water is and you could also stick a dry stick in if you wanted to be able to see how how high up the water is your enough water is when the water is right at the top of the gravel so the idea is that you don't need the water up into where the soil is yep and then you can hold that to the outside of the bed and see how much water there is. We're just putting it all around? Yep, and you can um, use it to, you know, to hold the yeah. mesh down around the holes.
Here's this. Here's the screen down there. I think we're good. Okay. 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 So the next step is we're going to take some homemade compost and we're going to mix it in roughly equal parts with cocoa coir and perlite, which I think I have a bag of over there. So the next thing we're going to do, we have a layer of gravel, which is the water reservoir, with five wicks in it and a standpipe and an outflow with a closure. And then we have a layer of cocoa coir, cocoa pea or cocoa coir, um, which will transfer the water from the gravel water reservoir up to the soil. So the next layer is going to be our soil mix. And our soil mix is going to be one-third prehydrated, you always want to prehydrate it before you try to mix it with anything, prehydrated cocoa coir. And then it's going to be one-third homemade compost. Compost. I see there's the obligate pieces like mini plastic on its way to being microplastic in there. And then one third perlite. Perlite is made from um, expanded um, expanded volcanic rock, pretty pumice, which they explode somehow in some sort of furnace with water. And it is a respiratory hazard, which is why we're wearing the um, N95 particulate protecting masks. So we're going to mix it up in thirds in the wheelbarrow and load by load put it in. Um, so this is, the cocoa coir is in there as a, for organic matter and also for moisture holding capacity. Um, the compost is, is soil that's got nutrients in it as well as uh, it's good compost. It has a lot of uh, carbon. You can see some of it's not all, all together broken down in there. And the perlite is there to make it lighter, which means that roots can pass through more easily and moisture can pass through more easily and the soil won't come packed too hard and make it too difficult for the roots to penetrate. Or um, it's good for loosening up um, potting mixes. So I wanted to say a word about... Um, about compost with animal manures. If you're using a compost made with animal manures and you're making it on your own farm or getting it from somebody, um, uh, I believe that for organic certification, and in, in any case for safety, it's a good idea to make sure that it is compost. It has not been, it has not been in an animal for at least two years. So I believe two years is um, the recommended amount. It doesn't take that long to make compost, but just to make sure that you don't have um, organisms that could conceivably be any danger to humans, um, that's advisable. Um, there are some good methods for making compost, even some quite quickly online. You can look up the Berkeley method. The Berkeley method, you um, you build a pile that's at least a meter by a meter by a meter, or a yard by a yard by a yard, three feet by three feet by three feet. Um, and you have layers alternating between what's called brown stuff, which is stuff that's high carbon, like dry leaves, straw, wood chips, um, and stuff that's called green, which might be um, animal manures, um, grass clippings, weeds, and so forth. Um, it's always prudent not to put a bunch of um, weed seeds in. Um, though if you're, if you're lucky and you get your compost evenly heated all through, you may be all right. Um, and if you look up the directions, it'll tell you how often to turn it and how to make the layers and what the proportions should be. But you should be able to get um, compost in just a few weeks, even as little as two, to do a hot compost method. Um, this pile has actually been sitting here at least three years. It was not scientifically created, so it was some of it was hot and some of it was probably cold, slower and it was a mixture of alpaca and llama manure, um, straw hay, um, straw bedding from wheat or barley, and alfalfa and grass hay leavings that the animals didn't finish. And it looks like a, a really nice texture. I haven't tested it to know um, anything about its nutrient content. I do know that the alpacas are getting um, 
mineral micronutrients and stuff like that so it's got extra they are fed extra selenium and zinc so a certain amount of that probably comes through um, but I have had such wonderful luck growing vegetables on composted alpaca manure that I'm not going to worry about it but but it's always if for 100% best results it's always great to um, um, get your soil tested or your soil mix tested I think that's enough. I think that we can't, I can't mix any more than that. So I think I'm going to start. Um, hmm. People who are trying this at home might want to do this on a, um, in a rather than in a wheelbarrow, which we did because um, it's an easy way to move the cocoa core around. Um, oh, we're getting a worm. Um, people might want to do this on a tarp. So um, the the whole bed will eventually wick up the water from the bottom and be moist enough. Um, if you're wanting to plant small seeds at this point, um, you might um, water it from the top with something that doesn't drill it down. You know, something with a um, a fine spray or a loose a loose gentle shower. So we're not going to plant any seeds today, we're going to give it a chance to hydrate, but we're going to put a couple of plants in. You want to go grab your plants? Yeah. Cut. So one final step before you plant is to get a cover, and we typically use um, a cottage cheese or yogurt type of container, and put it over your water inflow. Um, and that's so you don't have unwanted um, evaporation and you don't have um, creatures going down the hole. So we keep that over it when we're not filling it. And you can see you can see the water down there. Okay. Um, we're gonna wait for this to hydrate before we plant any seeds in it. Um, we're gonna it's gonna have um, greens that we're gonna eat raw like um, lettuces and different kinds of mustard greens and things like that. Um, but today we have some chard in a pot in pots and we're gonna put those in. You wanna pop those out? How do I, how do I do that without breaking them? Do you think that's a, is that an amaranth, pigweed, baby amaranth? It looks like a pigweed, but it yeah. could be any of those little. That's you. <laughs> okay. See how I'm supporting it just the way we did with the individual mm -hmm. pots and then you push on the, the bottom and it comes out? You can also do a little squeeze like this, mm -hmm. but they won't come out. Okay. Now these oh, look interesting that the roots on the red, the really red stemmed ones have red roots too. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that about them. That's really interesting. Cool. So you want to lay out a pattern? You want to put them in the middle since they're going to be ahead of everything else and tall? You want to put them down the middle? Like around here? Oh, they're going to straight line. In a straight line? Yeah. Separate? Sure. They'll get big. How far down? Do you want to lay them out first? Oh yeah, we could do that.
so I don't know how are, to do it. These are um, a little bit root bound. The roots have, have been, these have been in the pot a little bit too long. And so we're just going to take our fingers and break it open. doesn't matter if you break some of the roots so that they won't keep going around and around in the same spot, but instead we'll um, get the idea to grow down and out into the ground rather than around and around. Looks good. So dig yourself a little hole. You can, it can be about a quarter of an inch. It can be a little bit down. It doesn't have to be quite at the surface. Break open the roots. Like this. Mm -hmm. Make a little hole. Did we bring a jug over yet? Mm -hmm.